Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is number six in the Python Bytes series of tutorials. And in this one we're going to be looking at the clone array. Now this allows us to decide which clones go where within a cloner. So in other words, if we wish to clone zero to be a sphere, we have the power to place a sphere at that index point. That's what we're about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in several objects. So we'll have a cube, we'll have a cylinder, and we'll have a sphere. I'm going to select all of them, hold down my command and alt keys, and select a cloner. And that places all of them within the cloner there. Next thing I'm going to do is just say in here I just want one by one by three so that we get just three objects and we'll also switch on the index values for them as well. Okay so we've got it that far the next thing to do is get the ubiquitous python effector which as we had the cloner selected is already applied to it We'll select full control, go into scripting layout and open in editor, remove the loop and hit execute to bring everything back to the where it needs to be. I'm going to be using the Python editor here or the, or the console I should say here. So we'll switch to the Python view. Now what we need to know with this particular array is, is the identities of each of the clones. So that's what we're about. So if we say CLA, and then I copy this piece of code here and place this here and simply type clone at the end, we've now set up our clone array. Similarly, we need to copy this piece of code, paste it in here. type clone on the end of it and cla there. So that will update the clone array for us, otherwise we wouldn't see anything. Okay, great. So we've got those two set up for us there. So what we now need to do is set up a for loop and I'm going to say for i in range cnt for count as per usual and then I'm simply going to say print brackets cla square brackets i and we'll see what we get in the console and straight away we get three values okay and these are the identities of the three objects here so the sphere is 0.0, .0 nice and easy that one the cylinder is zero point lots of numbers, <laughs> as is, of course, the cube. That's 0 0.6 lots of numbers. I, this, the only niggle I've got about this is that you can't use the names. I just wish we could work with strings here instead of floating point values. It would make life a lot easier, but unfortunately we can't. We can't use the names. And there's, I've tried to do this in the past, see if there's a way around it, but there isn't. So it, we have to use these values there. It works with floating point values. So what we can do then is decide what goes where, as I've said. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do first, get a hold of my cloner. I'm just going to make it bigger. I'm going to say it's going to be three by three by one. I'll also just change the spacing here. So if I make this 220 by 220, that just separates the cubes up a little bit and that's fine. So we've got all of our uh, we've got all of our clones in there and we're starting with a sphere as our initial clone so at index value 0 we have a sphere so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 so we've got those in there what I'll also do is uh, just change the colour of them I think just to make life a little bit easier let's make them red that's good because now we can see the index values a little bit easier Great, so let's work on this from here. So what I'm going to suggest we do is create a list. If we just say um, 
objects and we say is it or is equal to square brackets and we can start to, to put these values into the object list let's just say that we want spheres a sphere at point zero so we'll copy this and place it in here now the next one we might want to be a cube so we'll copy this from there and paste this in here I think we'll put another sphere so we'll put we'll just type 0, 0.0 it's just as easy isn't it so we'll do that so we've got a sphere a cube a sphere then I think we could go perhaps a cylinder so we'll copy this one and paste it in here and then I think another sphere in the middle so we'll say 0, 0.0 another cylinder I think paste that in there so that gives us a cylinder here then we'll move on to I think another I think we'll have another uh, sphere so 0, 0.0 another cube so that's going to be this copied from here paste that in there and then we'll finish off with another sphere so that's what we've got in our list and all things being fair that should work out okay now if I say I've got for I in range count there which is fine instead of print what we'll say is clar square brackets I is equal to objects square brackets I and if we execute that we find that we've set it up as we said we would so we've got sphere cube sphere cylinder sphere cylinder sphere cube sphere exactly as I said it would work so that is how you work with the clone array within a Python effector it's as simple as that it just allows you to decide which clones go at which points within a cloner and that's quite useful because you might want certain things to be set at certain places within the grid array or any other array that you happen to be using within Mobra so yeah bear this in mind if you want to control which clones go where within a cloner this is the way you do it and that's as much as I wanted to show you in this tutorial it's a very simple array the clone array it's not a particularly complex one but uh, that's what you can do with it so have a play around with it and see what you can come up with but for now that just literally wraps this tutorial up so I hope you've enjoyed this one once again and that it's been worthwhile doing and you've got some more knowledge uh, and if you have enjoyed the video then please give it a thumbs up and of course if you haven't already subscribed to the channel then please do so leave a comment and of course ring the bell and wherever you happen to be on social media then please please share the video because all of this good stuff helps to keep the channel going in the right direction but anyway that just about wraps this one up so i'll see you very shortly on the next tutorial